What's going on? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about engraving metal with our laser engravers, specifically these 40 mil brass coins I've got. Now these are 100% brass coins and these are absolutely amazing if you're looking to engrave coins with your fiber laser. I will put a link down in the description if you do want to get your hands on some cheap coins. I haven't got loads to spare so yeah it'll be a first come first serve basis but like I said they'll be dirt cheap. I'll put a link down in the description for them. So today we are going to be using our Monport 60 watt mop laser to engrave one of these coins. Now I have been doing quite a lot of these coins myself and they are very very popular items because you can customize whatever designs you want for them and then your customer is going to have their own bespoke brass coin and it would be pretty cool for anyone to have their own design going on one of these whether it's like a company logo or if they face anything like that so with a normal fiber laser you are able to engrave these coins but as far as i'm aware as a standard fiber laser you can only engrave like 2d images so the image you load in will be like a black and white image and whatever the black parts are it'll just take those parts away but because we do have a moppet laser we are able to do a 3d slice so what that means is we can import a 3d depth map into lightburn I do believe it's 256 different shades of gray I can read. So between white and black and the 256 shades between, I, I might be wrong enough I am yet, yeah, feel free to correct me. But yeah, I believe it can read 256 shades of gray. So if you do import a depth map to engrave with your mop or fiber laser, I'll put a picture up now of what one of them is. And as you can see, there's lots of different shades of gray in there. And like I said, Lightburn can read that and it'll read each individual shade and then just take it away layer by layer. And then it'll get itself a 3D relief on these coins. And we will have a look at a couple I have made in a moment. But before we have a look at a couple of the coins I have done, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're not already. And I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Monport. Now, this video wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for Monport sending me this laser. So yeah, thank you very much to the guys at Monport. Check the website. I'll put a link down in the description. They are a massive laser manufacturer, one of the biggest in the industry, if not the biggest, and they do a massive range of different lasers. So yeah, don't forget to check them out. And I'll also put a promotional code down in the description. So if you do see a laser you like, you yourself can get a massive discount on that also and if you are looking for a high quality machine at a very reasonable price don't forget to check them out guys again i'll put a link down in the description so let's have a look inside lightburn this is the image i use so this is a depth map of myself i took a photo of myself converted it to a depth map and added text in photoshop if you want to know how i converted that i'll make a different video on that completely and let's have a look at the settings up here that I used. Now, as you can see inside Lightburn, these settings do look a little different from like your standard CO2 and diode lasers. You do get quite a few other settings to play with. It does make it a little bit more confusing, but you do get a bit more control with the laser. So the speed, I've gone quite slow here, 750 millimeters a second. Because this is a MOBA fiber laser, this can go really, really fast. I think it, I think it tops about seven and a half thousand millimeters, might even be 10,000 millimeters a second. So yeah, these lasers can perform very quick. Max power, 95%. Now I know that does sound high, but these lasers are made to run, you know, at high power for a very long time. Now this laser itself can be used for up to 100,000 hours. So running it at 9,500%, you know, you might not get that full 100,000 hours, but you are going to get very close to it. Again, frequency and Q pulse width. Again, these are things you can play with. But again, I did want to go quite shallow on this and try and keep the detail going. So I kept the frequency quite low. And then the Q pulse, I went up a little bit high. Line interval, again, I could have put this at 0.3, gone really high on the DPI. But I thought I'll keep it at 0.4 because I am going to clean it up at the end, buff it and polish it. So it's not going to matter too much. Scan angle, I found it doesn't really matter too much, but I just put it at 45 degrees. And near the image mode is 3D slice. This is what I said with the Mopper fiber lasers, you do get this option in Lightburn, which will allow you to do this type of image. And again, you have the number of passes I mentioned earlier, it can read 256 colors from white to black. So this is where you would usually put that. But as I mentioned, I did want to go quite shallow with this. So I put it down to 100. I probably could have gone about 150, 200. I will show you the coin in a minute. It isn't too bad, but I would have liked a little bit more depth on it. But again, that's just down to myself there choosing this setting because I wanted to go shallow. But we will show you other coins where we have gone the full 256 passes and we'll show you the type of detail we've managed to get. And now let's quickly show you exactly how I line this design up with the coin. I'm probably going to get a jig set up in the future so I can just place it and I know exactly where it goes. 
I haven't got one at the moment, so I'm going to show you how I set these up to a line ready to engrave. So I'm in Lightburn. This is the image I plan on engraving. So you'll see I've got these two outer circles there. So the outer circle at the top here, it's 40 mil, which is the full size of the coin. And then the inside is just where the inner lip is there. So how I set my images up is I'll put them centered and I'll apply a mask with the inside circle. Right, so I'll just turn the laser on. So with the outside circle selected, like I said, that's the full size of the coin. I'm gonna press frame and you'll see. So at the moment we can't see anything in regards to the framing. So if I press frame, you can see there is a red circle. That is 40 mil all the way around, which is the exact size of my coins. So I can just go in, put that in place. I can see that is perfectly in place on the coin. I can turn the framing off and I can just press go now. I've got all my settings ready to go. Just press go and the laser will do its thing. A few moments later. So this is how it turned out. So it does look pretty good and it does look like, you know, a normal coin that you can get. But you can see the uh, the channel name and the URL come out really nice. But again, I would have liked to have gone a little bit deeper with the actual head itself. But again, I am happy with that result. But I do know now for next time, I do need to just adjust them settings slightly. And they will come out exactly how I want it. So I've got quite a few other coins here to show you. These are a mixture of ones where I was just testing out the laser or ones I wasn't happy to send the customer. I've really done them. So I'm probably just going to give these to someone who can melt them down and do whatever they want with them. So this one is a Kraken style image. That's had the full 256 pads put on it. And you can see that pops out really, really nice. And all the details you can see, even in like the tentacles and everything, it just looks absolutely amazing. And then there's this one. Some of you might recognize what this is. This is a Santa Cruz logo. Again, you can see I've buffed this up quite well. So it's a bit shiny on the screen. But again, that has come out absolutely amazing. All the details are there, a nice bit of depth. And overall, absolutely amazing. So here is another one I buffed up really, really well. So it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but that is the logo for a band. And we actually did the back of that as well. So that's their name. And then that's a part of the act, I believe. This was one of the first ones I ever did. And this came up perfect. Look at that, all the detail on there again. Absolutely amazing, all like the hair and fur and everything. The wrinkles in his eyes, the teeth. This is probably my favorite one I've ever made. Absolutely chuffed with how that turned out. And um, again, just a cat. I believe that's a cat in a Batman outfit, but you can't really tell. Again, this is one where I was just playing with settings. And even though you can't really tell it there, it's off center, so I wasn't happy with it. But the depth on that cake, see that would look like something a CNC machine would create. But it's not, it's made with a laser, which is absolutely astonishing, honestly. The detail on that, if you could see that in person, you'd think that was milled on a CNC machine. And then on a the back, I was just testing another design, and that is a portrait of a cat. Again, this is another one of my favorite ones. This was the main reason I ever wanted to get a fiber laser, was to make the full collection of these. But again, anyone who's born in the 90s will definitely know what that is. That is the T-Rex coin from Power Rangers. And again, like, it doesn't really do it justice on camera. This is so shiny. I can kind of get the reflection in. There's so many different coins I've done using this machine and they've just come out absolutely incredible. Obviously they don't come off the machine looking that shiny. I probably spend about five minutes buffing them after. It doesn't take long at all to get them this shiny. You just need to use the right method. Again, I'll probably make another video on that in the future if anyone's interested how to uh, how to polish up their coins. But again, guys, if you're looking to give this a go, again, I will put a link down in the description where you can get some coins really, really cheap. And again, I haven't got loads of them, so it is going to be a first come, first serve basis. And also don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Monport. Again, I'll put a link down in the description. They are running a pretty big sale at the moment, and you can use the promotion code as well to get actually extra money off. It does work against sale items. So if you are looking to upgrade your laser to something with a bit more quality, 
definitely get over there guys and get yourself a wicked bargain. So I should mention as well, like the time it takes to do these coins, it does obviously depend on the settings you are using, but I've got the settings tweaked just right where I can get an image done with that quality in probably just over an hour. Or if you're doing something like a 2D flat image like that, you can get that done in about 15, 20 minutes. It honestly doesn't take long at all. And if you see the price what people are paying for their own bespoke customized coins, it definitely makes it worth it. If you are looking to take the step to buy a Fire Blazer, it is a massive commitment because these machines are quite expensive. But just making things like this alone, honestly, you'll pay the laser off in no time. What people will pay to have their own high quality custom coins like this, it is absolutely unreal. And if you are just doing these on their own, you can easily pay the laser off in a couple of months. But again, these lasers can do so much more. So if you're adding all the different types of products you can do with this laser in your shop, honestly, you can pay this off so much quicker. And don't forget to like the video. And if you're not already subscribed, guys, it does help me out a bunch. And again, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Monport for sponsoring this video. So I'm off to go make a bunch more coins, guys. I got orders to fill. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra now.